not raining. <laughs> On behalf of Pickens County Council, I want to welcome uh, the family, friends, guests, citizens of the county uh, to the dedication we're doing today. Um, we're going to have light refreshments afterwards, and at the end of the ceremony, we're going to play taps, and that's the end. There's no one going to come back up. Military, no, that's when you end with taps, that's what you end with. So, um, we're going to get started today and uh, bring up the Reverend Ray Longenecker to do our invocation. Would you join me for our invocation? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given to us, allowing us to gather together to honor the memory of these fallen heroes. We thank you, dear God, for the citizens of this city of this county and of this state who comprise the people that serve in many different ways. We thank you, dear Lord, for those that have served, that have gathered among us, that have served in the military, that have served as civil servants, those that serve us daily in our schools and in our government. We thank you, dear God, for the men who have given their lives on behalf of our freedom. We thank you, dear God, that there are two men willing to die for us, Jesus Christ who died for our souls and the soldier who was willing to die for our freedom. And I pray, dear God, that today, as we honor the memories of those that have fallen and given their all, that you would bless us with continued freedom and safety here in this great nation. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to bring up the Reverend Roy Stoddard to Post the Colors. Post the Colors.
Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I've been asked to say a few words about Herman. Uh, I'd first like to start off with a story about one of his comrades, Lloyd Hendricks. We lost him last year at the age of 90. Uh, he was a World War II veteran and a Purple Heart winner. Uh, I got to interview Lloyd. I went over to his house along with my dad in 2009, and I almost got goosebumps when I went to go speak to this man because uh, no one's life paralleled Herman's like Lloyd's did. Um, they went to the same grammar school together. They were drafted at the same time together. They served in the same division together, and they were shot within a week of each other. Um, neither soldier made it to, into Rome, and they weren't part of the Red Bull division that actually got to walk through the streets of Rome. Uh, and one of the highlights of talking to Lloyd, right off the bat, I got to see where he was wounded. And I've never been more honored to see somebody's leg in my life. Uh, <laughs> but he still had the, uh, the remnants of uh, his wounds uh, on his right leg. And um, at the end of the interview, uh, my dad said something that I was almost shy to say because I just thought it was way too cliche. Uh, but he looked at Lloyd and he shook his hand. He said, I want to thank you for your service. And what Lloyd said shocked me. He said, you know, nobody's ever told me that before. Uh, he was 84 years old and nobody had ever thanked him for his service. Um, and I wonder, how could that be possible? Uh, World War II veteran Purple Heart winner lived 60 years after the war and was never thanked. But I looked at my own life, and I, I had two grandfathers that served in the Navy, uh, and I never thanked them for their service. Uh, my own father, I talked to him daily, and I've never thanked him for his service in the military. Um, and so it, it made me realize that we do give thanks to Furman. The, I mean, I was aware of Furman. I couldn't be blamed for not thanking him because he died 40 years before I was born. Um, but I can't tell you the first time I heard about Furman because I've known about him since I was a little kid. Um, I've always been known that Furman was the Medal of Honor winner and it carries so much weight in the family and I was appreciative of what he did and, and his sacrifice because uh, I know it impacted my life. Uh, I grew up on the same home place that we got largely because of the pension uh, that we received from his service in the war. Uh, I know that he helped spark an interest in history uh, in me. and. Uh, People are aware of what Furman did. Um, I got the honor, I teach at Daniel High School, and I got the honor this year, I taught Lo uh, Lloyd Hendricks' great grandnephew. Uh, his name was Trevor Hendricks, and I showed a picture of Furman, and uh, immediately, I didn't even ask, he said, that's Furman Smith. And I said, uh, yeah, what did Furman do? And he said, he won the Medal of Honor, and uh, he killed 10 men and saved two of his buddies. And uh, when asked to describe Furman, most people today would use words like brave, heroic, and fearless. Um, and so when I interviewed Lloyd in 2009, I was very interested to hear what he had to say. Uh, you know, how did you feel when you found out Furman won the Medal of Honor? And he said that he was surprised. Uh, and I think most people that knew Furman might have been surprised because I don't think they would have described him as brave, heroic, fearless before he left for the war. But people who knew him best said that he was humble, quiet, and shy. Uh, Lloyd wondered how he could only know people for maybe two months because he was so quiet and willing to put his life on the line. But that's what he did when the time came for it. Um, and I think it's important to remember today that Furman never knew he won the Medal of Honor. Furman probably wasn't new, didn't know how great of things he could achieve. Uh, he never wore the Medal of Honor around his neck. Uh, I mean, he was a 19-year-old kid that missed his girlfriend. Um, most comrades that he had in basic training, the thing that they remember the most is every single night he would cry. Uh, yet somehow he found the composure. He was humble, quiet, and shy, and he missed his girlfriend. But he was also capable of great things. He was heroic, he was fearless, and he was brave. Uh, and so I think it's important to, to think that um, 
as we look back on this, we need to make it a point uh, every opportunity to thank the, the veterans we have and the, and, the, and the military men that we have today because we don't want to say that we did not appreciate them until after they were gone. Thank you. I'll now read the citation. Furman L. Smith, rank and organization private, 135th Infantry, 34th Infantry Division. Place and date, near Lavugno, Italy, May 31st, 1944. Entered service at Central, Six, Central South Carolina, birthplace Six Mile, South Carolina. Awarded the Medal of Honor January 17, 1945. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. In its attack on a strong point, an infantry company was held up by intense enemy fire. The group to which Private Smith belonged was far in the lead when attacked by a force of 80 Germans. The squad leader and one other man were seriously wounded, and another member of the group withdrew to the company position. But Private Smith refused to leave his wounded comrades. He placed them in a shelter of shell craters, and then alone faced a strong enemy counterattack, temporarily checking it by his accurate rifle fire at close range, killing and wounding many of the foe. Against overwhelming odds, he stood his ground until shot down and killed, rifle in hand. 